Good morning, leaving the shelter. It is day 12 and it is freezing. <laughs> I've, uh, it was quite cold last night. It rained and really, really windy. Um, hasn't rained for a couple of hours now, but it is still really windy. Um, but uh, good to be back on trail. So yesterday, good to finally start again, get this uh, adventure back on track again. Got lucky with that hitch to uh, get to the outdoor centre. I'd still walk three and a half k before I got the hitch, but it was going to be a 10k, so it was a nice bonus. Uh, the trail was okay yesterday. The bush was pretty. Um, there were some nice sections, but a lot of the trail was mud. <laughs> Um, some of it was deep, some of it not so deep. Still made okay progress. Um, only one big hill, so it was a fairly easy day. And then finished off with a, a short gravel road walk. I had that lovely shelter to um, hang out in. Yesterday, I didn't, my body felt strong all day. Um, and this morning, I feel really good. Apart from, uh, my second toe on my left foot never happened before but just above the nail the skin is split um, really really weird as I say never happened before so I've um, put a sticky plaster and some tape on to um, give it a bit of padding and try and stop it from splitting some more today short walk on this forestry road and then into Burton's track through the bush a little bit of a climb then along through some more forestry roads come down to Scott's Road so a bit of a gravel road and then across some forestry down to Sledge Track up a big hill um, yeah that'll be a bit of a hill um, and then follow a track for a short time, cross country across to a, another forestry road and then the rest of the day will be on the forestry road. So, shouldn't be too bad a day today. Um, yeah. Alright, off the road onto the trail again. Trail is a stream. There was a fair bit of water last night, obviously. Wow. <laughs> that didn't take long to get muddy. Yeah, lots of bogs like this. <laughs> the rain's been causing a few slips as well. Um, I think this is the third one now. <laughs> Whoa. Put a little tree all the way down. <laughs> All right, off this farm track and onto Burton's site proper. Now 30 to the Fuddy. Fuddy means house in uh, Māori. It's a lovely section of trail. There's been a few little muddy patches, but more good trail than mud. The uh, stream is just down there. And um, this section of the trail was built by this guy, Burton, um, that we're going to his place soon. He's got an interesting story, but uh, I'll tell it when we get to his whare. Well, it's got the information sign and I can make sure my facts are right. Out of the bush, looks like an old farmed area which is slowly regenerating back to natives. We've got algae on them. That's a nice one, I like that colour. Oh, made it! This is the site of Burton's Fuddy. Obviously it's not here anymore. And here is the summary. So, on or near the spot, James M. Burton lived alone in his fuddy from 1908 to 1941 while he cleared and farmed the land on the opposite side of the river. To gain access, he constructed the dray track to Tukamari Valley Road end that now forms part of the Te Araroa Trail. And that's the part that I've just walked on. 
James Burton came to an untimely end in March 1941 when the suspension bridge he built here collapsed while he was crossing it. He fell 8 metres onto the rocks below, breaking a leg and causing other injuries. He managed to reach the nearest neighbours some 12 hours later and was hospitalised but later died of his injuries. James had the presence of mind to feed his dogs prior to making his last slow, painful journey out over the track. From here I continue following up the river but I cross over it a couple of times before I start the big climb. Across the river from over here, um, this is the official crossing point but the rivers are up slightly and it was a really deep channel there so I actually went along there a little bit managed to keep it shallower <laughs> just come down to here um, now hello little lamb yeah, where it's mama's fortunately I can't carry it with me cute little lamb ah oh, there's its mum hey pretty good marking make sure you don't miss that you've got a turn down here <laughs> Back onto single track for a while. Back onto farmland. It's been marked with these uh, stakes and orange triangles as well. There's a massive flood came through here. Look at the damage it did to the pole. That's a metal pole. <laughs> Strange place for a sign. <laughs> giving you an update and uh, another river crossing <laughs> where is it oh, yeah. it's an orange triangle way up there very hard to see there's some fern over it now I leave the lovely river and I start climbing up and up. I think it's about 250 vertical meters uh, over uh, around a kilometer. So not as bad as yesterday. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that looks steep. Ooh. This is just about at the top. Hills hasn't been as bad as I was expecting. Uh, it started off really steep but then uh, the middle bit eased off a bit and then steep again for the top bit and now pretty soon about to come out into the open Whew. which I'm not looking forward to because it's really windy that's a nicer way to handle the swamp <laughs> something nice to stand on and out of the bush and Scots Road car park down that way. It was at this spot here in 2014 that I took a photo because this was the halfway point of the Te Arawa. It was um, a lot more overgrown than it is now. They've done a bit of work on the track. A bit more pleasant down in these uh, trees sheltering from the wind. That was really windy up there. <laughs> Done a good job with this. Oh, this looks beautiful. A couple of platforms, a couple of chairs, benches, hooks. Yeah, lovely. Um, and rubbish bin, and there's a toilet uh, just up there. And some information about it Te Whare o Motorimu. Um, opened by Pampasus North City Council and Te Araroa Trust. The island of Rimu is the name of the area. Had a lovely lunch in there. Um, I wouldn't want to stay the night because the wind is just going straight through the door. Be nice if even if it was a curtain across it or, or something just to block the wind. And yeah, that would make it perfect. But um, right, I'm going to make the most of the rubbish bin. With through hikers any chance to get rid of rubbish. Oh, it's such a good feeling. Less weight to carry. <laughs> All right, now I've got four kilometers to the end of Scott's Road. Exiting the forestry. 
roads. Not that the roads are going to look any different up ahead. Um, all right, little information, track sign. Yeah, six hours. It's taken me four and a quarter hours. <sighs> Two kilometres. And then I'll be leaving the Te Araroa. Alright, here is where I leave the Te Araroa. It takes backtrack, which goes that way. But I am heading across this way. I'm here and I follow the road around all the way around here and then there's a track that actually drops down into sled track. That's a shuttle. This is a mountain bike park um, so they do daily shuttles in the weekend so you can go all the way down to the bottom. Lots of pretty cool tracks in here. Um, Palmerston North Mountain Bike Club have done a huge amount of work here. Absolutely brilliant so I'm going to have to come and bring my bike. I've done a couple of runs here, but I haven't had my bike out yet. Whole hillside is just covered in mountain bike tracks. All the way around here and down on the other side of here as well. From here I follow the road down and I'm dropping 200 metres down to the stream at the very bottom. And then I'm following the spur and it's a 300 metre climb back up to the ridge, along the ridge to that uh, small hill and then off the other side and then up the ridge line which is behind it. Line post, be good to get down into the shelter, so windy up here. Oof. Now the big downhill starts. Trail is zigzagging around. Um, and there's a few steps as well I'm trying to cope with the steepness though the steps are quite big ones which are quite hard to come down <sighs> nice little trail Woohoo! that's the downhill run <laughs> Ooh, it's deep There is no water for the next at least 19 kilometers if I'm lucky. There's a stream at 19 but it might be further so I've just had to load up with a full load of water just in time to go up this big hill. <laughs> That's where I'm heading, Platinum Mines. And then I drop off from there, go cross country for a little bit, pick up another track. So they're not all stairs, but this first bit is, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> oh, puffing a bit. I think the stairs are finished now. Um, busy track. Already seen four people. <laughs> um, stopped and talked to two ladies for a while. They know the area, so I was saying what the route was, and they knew all the places. Oh, talking about gear as well. They were commenting on my uh, trail shoes. Oh. Wow, it's hard work with a full pack load of water. <laughs> no more wood steps, but there's root steps. Showing what a small world it is. One of the ladies knows the owners of the Lotton Point Motel where my vehicle's been stored. Small world. Looks like the top. So I'm here and here to there and then to the road on the edge of the private land. This Toy Toy Loop is a nice track. There's a few bogs but the mud is starting to dry up now which is nice. Um, <laughs> So windy. <laughs> I'm worried one of these trees is going to fall down on me. It's sheltered um, most of it, but every now and again you get into a clear bit. Woo, 
big ones. Lovely tourist. Let's have a look at a horizontal platinum mine. It's only two minutes. So it's Manny's Dorfer's platinum mine from 1875. I'll give it a miss going inside it, given that it's all water. But there you go, it's a platinum mine. Woohoo! Bit of a view. Alright, following platinum mine loop. This is the track I'm going to be going to. So just go to the end of this loop and then it's going to be some pretty tough bush bashing. This is as far as the track takes me. Here's a, uh, another mine. You can actually go down and have a look if you want, but from here. Um, I now follow the ridge line along, but I'm just wondering, it looks quite hard going on the ridge line, so I might try and tuck down in the bush as long as the uh, bush keeps going instead. So, uh, tucking in here, and it's pretty thick, awful secondary bush, um, so it's going to be interesting. To the ridge line, and there may be a possible track. Um, I've put my gaiters on. I bought gaiters this time. <laughs> um, so we'll see how it goes. Woohoo! <sighs> I do not recommend that route. <laughs> A little bit of blood. That was hard, hard going. Got a little bit of a trapping line for the last little bit, but yeah, that was not easy. Right, now I walk along the road as long as I feel like it. When I feel tired, I'll try and find a camp spot out of this wind. So apparently there is a trek from here. <laughs> oh dear, I couldn't find it. But uh, if you get on that one, that'll make it easier. So look closely for the trek. Right. From here it's a big climb up to the top. It's the high point up there. Um, I, think, no, I think the high point's further on and then it'll be down a ridge line. That's handy. <laughs> Gives me a little gauge. I'm not going all the way to Pahiatua track. Um, there's some flattish bits and around nine kilometers. Which I might be able to find a tent site if I don't get tired before. <laughs> See how fast that mist is moving. I'm heading up there, sitting in the clouds at the moment. They're extending the wind farm. It says sign in, but I can't. But there's no one there at this time of night. That's the high point. So now I'm just along the ridge. In the distance there, you can see the trail on the ridge line. Woohoohoo! <laughs> I think I'm going all the way out of sight there before it'll start to flatten off enough to try and find a camp spot. I have fun bringing the turbines up here. Some of these roads are quite steep and uh, a lot of the ones I've been on, it's a little short, sharp ups and downs, but very, very steep. Little beetle struggling in the wind. There we go, I've put him back. Mine says 10k, so I've come 4k. It's looking at the view. It's a uh, Palmerston North City down there. Ooh. Still windy. Most of the time the wind's behind. Slightly sheltered from the wind here. <sighs> That's looking out over the wire wrapper. <sighs> the good thing about the wind is most of the time been behind or just to the side sort of side behind angle um, that last hill the wind was so strong I could feel it pushing me up the hill which is pretty cool um, but there was one section where they've cleared the vegetation there was no shelter and it was coming from the side and yeah that one that was a bit difficult a couple of times I had to stop and just brace myself Oh, the tree's gone. Seeing a bit more construction now. Uh, I think the wind is getting stronger. That last two, almost running up it with the wind behind me. Nice 
last couple of ponds, not sure that's what they were after. Loud noise that antenna makes. Spooky noise. So I've walked 9k, it's meant to start flattening off around here. So I'm starting to look for a campsite. 